today's project is to make a battery holder and charger for the 14500 lithium ion rechargeable battery. This battery is the same size as a AA alkaline battery. I have converted all my electrical devices that use AA and also AAA into 14500 lithium ion batteries and I need a charger for it. This is the charger I've been using for the 14500. It's a very good charger and you can adjust the current down to 200 milliamp, which is perfect for this battery because its capacity is only 740 milliamp hour. So you should only charge it at between 200 to 300 milliamp max. The problem with this charger is number one, it can only charge four at a time. But the biggest problem with this is it's getting quite expensive. When I bought this a few years ago, it was only $25. Now, it's $50. That's not too long ago. It's only about two to three years ago, and the price is doubled. Talking about inflation. There are also other alternatives, such as this charger here. But the problem with this is that it only charges one amp, and you cannot adjust the charging current. You should not charge this battery at 1 amp because that will be really bad for the battery. And that's why I'm going to make a battery holder for this. It's cheap to the point it's almost free and I can charge many of these at the same time. For this project, we are going to need plywood, plastic irrigation pipe, battery clips and TP4056 boards. You got this piece of half inch plywood and it's going to be the base. The dimension is 8 inch by 5 inches. I cut out two small strips of plywood and these are going to be the terminal support for the battery. For the battery holder, I'm going to use half inch irrigation pipe. The 14500 battery fits in here perfectly, just like that. I cut out five small sections and you can see the battery fit in here perfectly. I'm going to cut the pipe in half using the aviation snip. Here we go and this is where the battery is going to sit in. To mount this on here I'm just going to use wood glue and brad nailer. Next step is to glue the pipe down. I'm just going to use hot glue and glue it down. And then I'm gonna nail it down with my brad nail. Just like that. Here it is. There is a total of 10 spaces for 10 batteries. Next step is to install the negative terminal on the bottom here. And these are the terminals that I'm gonna use. These are called the battery spring contacts. And they are very inexpensive. I bought them on eBay for 10 cents a pair. Let me show you how I install this thing. So this is the negative terminal and it's gonna go on here. One way to mount this on is to find a screw that goes through the hole in the center here and it goes through the spring. And I don't have any screw that is small enough to go through the spring. I'm gonna use this hole here on the top to mount it on my plywood. The problem is I don't have any nail or screw that is small enough to go through this hole. But I do have brad nail and these are small enough to go through this little hole here. And this is an 18 gauge brad nail. Brad nails are glued together and it's very easy to separate them. Just get a plier and you can just Bend it out. Voila. There is your nail. And this is small enough to go through this hole. Just like that. To install this negative terminal, I bend it 90 degrees. Put some hot glue on my plywood. And put on the terminal. Just like that. The hot glue might hold this for a while, but it's not a permanent solution. It's going to come out one way or another, so I'm going to use the brad nail and nail it in there.
just like that. And see the brad nail holds it on really good. Next step is to install this wooden bar on the top. So same as before, wood glue on here and then brad nail. Here it is. That's the top bar for the positive terminal. And for the positive terminal, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bend it 90 degrees and mount it on the top with a brad nail. Here it is. All of the positive terminals are installed and secured by brad nail. Next step is to install the TP4056 board onto the plywood. And I'm going to use double sided tape on the bottom to stick it on. And then to secure it onto the plywood, I am going to use brad nail again. This brad nail fits perfectly through the hole. Just like that. Here it is. I have it completed. I have seven of these connected in parallel and those go to this TP4056 board. Two of these in parallel and it goes to this board and this is a single that goes to this board. You can see I have excess wire here, here and here and that's because I want to use my amp meter and loop around the wire to measure the current when I need to. Let me explain why I configure my charger the way it is. This battery here, capacity is 740 milliamp hour. So to charge this battery correctly, I need to charge it between half C to one third C, or between 250 milliamp to about 350 milliamp maximum. This board charges the battery at exactly one amp, and that's too much for this battery. But if I have seven in parallel, the current is going to be divided between the cells. So 1000 milliamp divided by 7 and that's about 140 milliamp for each cell if I have 7 cells in here. So with 7 in parallel I can charge between 3 cells in parallel to 7 cells in parallel. I cannot do 2 because it's going to be 500 milliamp for each cell and that's going to be too much for this. With 3 cells in parallel I charge each cell at 330 milliamp, and that's reasonable. But if I charge anything faster than 330 milliamp for this cell, it's going to be bad for this. And that's why I have this two cells in parallel going to a single TP4056 board. This board is just an ordinary TP4056 board, but it has been modified. It doesn't charge at 1 amp max. It charges at 400 milliamp max. This is the TP4056 spec sheet and if you take a look at the 1 amp charging current we got 1.2 kilo ohm resistor and that is the little resistor on this board right here. You can see it says 122. The last digit is the multiplier so we got 12 times 10 to the power of 2. That's 1000 200 ohms. This is the board that I have modified. You can see this resistor here. It says 3001. And that's 300 times 10 to the power of 1 or 3000 ohm. The next one that I modified, I put in a 5000 ohm resistor. You can see here it says 5101. So the last digit is the multiplier. So 510 times 10 to the power of 1 or 5100 ohms. So here it is on the board. This one is the one with 3000 ohm resistor. This one with 5000 ohm. And if you take a look at the chart, 3000 ohm will give me 400 milliamp charging rate, which is this one here. So I got two in parallel. So each one will charge at 200 milliamp. This board has a 5000 ohm resistor and if you take a look at the chart, 5000 ohm will give me 250 milliamp charging rate and that's this single cell right here. So with this configuration, I can charge one cell, two cells, three cells, or all the way to 10 cells all at the same time. The resistors I'm using are these tiny surface mount resistors. And they are called 0805 resistor. 
and I bought them as a kit that includes many different varieties. This whole bag only cost me a few dollars, so it's very inexpensive but very useful. If you don't have surface mount resistor, you can just use regular resistor and it will work just the same. Let's give it a try, shall we? This one with 5000 ohm resistor, so it should give me 250 milliamp output. Let's see what we got. There we go, 0 0.2 amp. That's right on the money. Next one we got here is the one with 3000 ohm resistor. So it should put out 400 milliamp. Here we go. There we go, right on the money, 0 0.4 amp. And here we have two in parallel, so each will receive 200 milliamp. And if I need to charge three or more, I'm just going to put them in here. So there you have it, 14500 battery charger that can charge many cells at the same time. And it's very easy to make. It only cost me a couple of bucks and just a few things I have laying around. And that's all for now, folks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.